This is the opening of a found footage horror film titled Nocturnal Celluloid. The movie was produced by Woodstock Roadshow, a posse of talented individuals who make movies out of Woodstock, Australia. This film in particular is written and directed by Billy Rollins and stars Jimmy G. Arnazzo. I actually had the chance to interview these guys back in 2022 when they released their feature film, Does This Taste Like Degreaser to You? Over the years, we've shouted each other out and even collaborated on a few videos, like my reviews of Wake and Fright and Mad God. This past year, I had the chance to actually watch this movie ahead of time before it hit the festival circuit, and I was blown away. So before getting into the analysis, I highly recommend you actually watch the short film for yourself because nothing compares to experiencing it for the first time yourself. There's a link down below in the description. For those of you who are still sticking around, the text on screen lets us know exactly where we are. South Vietnam in 1969. We hear the chaos and the panicked screams of American soldiers. We can assume this is during warfare. The film then cuts to the U.S. in 1980. We're introduced to Stevie, who discovers film reels from the Vietnam War that belong to his deceased Uncle Gary. Stevie watches the film reels and sees Gary in Vietnam with his fellow soldiers. These reels were filmed by an unseen soldier named Anderson, and these reels are accompanied by Gary's journal that he made throughout his deployment. We see Gary in combat, and the reels, as well as his journal, gradually get more unhinged. They get darker and more sinister. Gary has a clear disdain for his commanding officer, Sergeant Wilkes. Eventually, footage shows the jungle at night. It's difficult to make out exactly what's happening, but it is clear that this is where the film started. We can hear chaos and screams, and Gary is seen wearing a mask of sorts, and has already dispatched Sergeant Wilkes. Upon laying his eyes on Anderson, Gary appears to take him out as well, just as the film reel ends. Stevie hears a noise. He gets up, and he sees Gary standing in the hallway aiming a rifle at him, and the film cuts to credits. Nocturnal Celluloid stands alone as there aren't really a lot of horror movies set in the Vietnam War. Sure, there are movies about the Vietnam War that are absolutely terrifying, but there aren't Vietnam War movies that are explicitly horror flicks. After all, it almost feels unnecessary because the Vietnam War itself was horrific. Men as young as 18 being forced by their government to fight and die in a country that they can't even point to on a map is downright tragic as is. Films like Apocalypse Now and Casualties of War explore what happens to the mental state of men as they slowly lose their sanity and commit horrific acts. One of the most iconic films to bridge that gap between horror and the Vietnam War is Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket. The film is a harrowing exploration of the dehumanizing and brutal brutal nature of both military boot camp and the Vietnam War. Set in a Marine Corps boot camp in Paris Island, South Carolina, the first portion of the film is focused solely on the young recruits, as they're transformed into these hardened soldiers under the unforgiving leadership of the drill sergeant Hartman. The real horror here doesn't really come from the drill sergeant or even the threat of war, but rather the process of dehumanization that we witness in Private Pyle. Specifically, the scene near the end of this first half, where Pyle manically repeats the rifleman's creed in the latrine. The face that Pyle makes is absolutely blood-curdling, and I get that same exact feeling when watching Nocturnal Celluloid. That dehumanization that we see is pretty much carried over to Nocturnal Celluloid almost perfectly. Wait, are you tired of feeling like your online privacy is as secure as a post-it note on a busy street? Picture this, browsing the internet without protection is like traveling with a see-through backpack. Everyone can see where you keep your wallet. But fear not, because today's video is sponsored by Private Internet Access, your virtual bodyguard in the digital world. So. What exactly is a VPN? Well, it's a lot like a cloak of invisibility for your internet connection. With private internet access, your IP address is hidden and your online activity is encrypted through a secure tunnel, shielding you from prying eyes and data thieves. Think about those public Wi-Fi networks at airports or coffee shops. They're a gold mine for hackers lurking in the shadows, ready to snatch your personal data quicker than you can say password one, two, three. But with private internet access, your your data stays safe and sound, even on sketchy networks. Their world-class server infrastructure encrypts your connection, making your information as bulletproof as Godzilla. And 
Here's the kicker. Have you ever missed out on binge watching your favorite shows because of regional restrictions? With private internet access, you can wave goodbye to geoblocks and say hello to unlimited content from around the globe. From streaming services to online deals, private internet access lets you access it all with just a click of a button. And with support for all major platforms, you can protect every device in your household or workspace. And did I forget to mention their commitment to privacy? With over 30 million downloads, Private Internet Access is the most transparent VPN provider out there. They never log your data, and their no-logs policy has stood the test of time. Plus, signing up for Private Internet Access is risk-free, with their 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support at your fingertips. Speaking from personal experience, this is the best VPN that I've ever used. So, why wait? Protect your digital life today with private internet access. You can use my referral code www.piavpn.com slash firewood to get 83% off private internet access with four months free. You heard that right. Four months free. Remember, when it comes to your privacy, don't leave it to chance. Choose private internet access. There's something about the scrunched up face that Gary makes throughout the film that creeps me out, and I know I'm not alone. In DMs, I asked the film's director, Billy, where that facial expression came from, and he told me, It's funny, because my cousins used to pull this face to me when I was a kid, and it would scare the shit out of me, and still does. So, I thought it was fitting for the film. Despite that personal origin, I think this face is horrific to pretty much anyone, and a lot of that has to do with the Uncanny Valley, a phenomenon where humanoid objects that closely resemble humans are not quite realistic enough, and they evoke feelings of unease or discomfort in observers. Obviously, Gary's human, but he looks so inhuman that it feels off-putting. The gradual deterioration of Gary's sanity and morality is a classic trope of psychological horror, as well as just Vietnam movies in general. As the audience witnesses Gary's descent into darkness, they are forced to confront the darkness within themselves. The film explores themes of guilt, paranoia, and existential dread, tapping into primal fears that lurk in the human psyche. The isolation of the characters, both in the jungle during war and even Stevie just by himself in present day, amplifies the sense of vulnerability and helplessness. The feeling of being watched or pursued by an unseen enemy pervades every frame of the film. You even get this in certain and flashes of Gary's face within scenes. It's as if the spirit of Gary is haunting this film reel. Nocturnal Celluloid also utilizes a unique setup where the found footage is shown to the audience by a third party. In this case, it's Gary's nephew, Stevie. The scenes where Stevie watches the old film reels remind me a lot of the film Sinister. Specifically, I'm talking about the scenes where Ethan Hawke's character watches found footage from the previous families that lived in his house. In both movies, the main characters stumble upon a trove of ancient film reels that manage to terrify the audience as well as the protagonist in the story. You see, I love found footage for a lot of reasons. For starters, the format often presents events from a objective perspective, placing viewers directly into the shoes of the character and showing events as is. But it's also a little subjective too, because you see what the main character sees and nothing else. It makes the horror more visceral and personal. Found footage often employs shaky camera work, low lighting, and obscured visuals, which I think contribute to the sense of unease and uncertainty. The horror itself isn't directly shown to the audience, and as a result, the audience has to come up with something in their mind to fill in the gaps. Most of the time, it's going to be more scarier than anything the filmmakers could put on screen. Nocturnal Celluloid is one of the best short films I've seen in a long time. It was obviously made on a low budget, and the filmmakers actually utilized a real Super 8 camera for the Vietnam scenes, infusing the narrative with this authentic and gritty atmosphere. There's such a meticulous amount of care and effort put into every part of this short film. The cinematography is gorgeous, and the sound design is top-notch. Ever since starting this channel back in 2021, I've wanted to use it to celebrate and platform independent filmmaking. So go and check this film out, link is in the description. I want to make more videos just like this, where I highlight independent filmmaking and I talk about why I love independent films and spotlight some of them just like this. With all that out of the way, I'm Cole McCormick, you're watching Firewood Media, and consider becoming a member to support the channel. For just $1.99 a month, you'll receive member shoutouts and your name featured as an executive producer in all of our film projects. 
There's also going to be member only videos as well as exclusive behind the scenes content that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, enjoy exclusive production updates and photos straight from the heart of Firewood Media. You don't have to if you don't want to, it's just an extra perk for anyone that wants to support the channel while also getting to see some unique content. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.